Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about new exciting features that's coming to JavaScript in 2020. So the website that I'm on right now is the proposals for ECMAScript. Uh, links will be in the description below. But the only ones that I want us to look at right here, let's go over these real quick. You see all these 2020s here on the right column. So these are the features that's coming to ECMAScript in 2020, which means that Sooner or later, the JavaScript will start supporting these. Not yet, but it will, the support will, uh, for them will come soon. So we have string.prototype.match all, some import stuff, uh, some probably some uh, complicated import stuff, a big int, a new number type, promise that all settled, global this, uh, they're gonna update the for in mechanics. Now, these last two are the ones that we're going to be focusing on in this video, and it is optional chaining and knowledge coalescing operator. So if you have Babel, if you're working on a project that uses Babel, uh, the recent version of Babel, which is 7.8, it uses, it has polyfills for optional chaining and knowledge coalescing operator. That means you can start using these today. As a matter of fact, if you were using TypeScript, you could, uh, these were available about two months ago with TypeScript, TypeScript 3.7. So I've personally been using them a lot in my projects and I highly recommend you guys learn about them and start using them too. And that's what this video is gonna be all about. By the way, if it's your first time joining me here today, my name is Justin. I make programming content every single day. I make JavaScript algorithm tutorial videos, React tutorial videos, anything that involves coding, I'm all for it and I try to make videos on it. So if you like my content, please click like and subscribe below. You will see these type of contents like this every single day. All right, on with the video. So the first feature that I want to talk with you guys is optional chaining. And out of all the features that's coming to ECMAScript 2020, uh, this is the one that I'm most excited for. And this is something that I've already been using in my React projects because uh, with TypeScript actually, this already came a few months ago. So I'm gonna be using this TypeScript playground here just to test out the code because this is not yet available uh, within JavaScript, but TypeScript, it's av available here. So I'm gonna just test it out here. I'm not gonna be writing any TypeScript code here. I'm just gonna use it for its optional chaining features. So let me show you guys what's going on here. This is MDN, uh, Mozilla documentation, and I'm gonna shamelessly use their example that they have here. So, uh, and I made another, I call this a person. So we have person one, which is an object that has a name, and in this case, she has a cat, uh, with, the, with uh, in turn, has a name. And then person two is named Jackie, but she now has a dog named Dino. So notice that the shape of these two objects is not the same. This one has a cat and Jackie has a dog. So they're not the same. And this happens many times when you're working on a big project that relies on an external API. You can't always control the shape of the response that you get. So I have made an array here called people that has both people, that has both person inside of it. And let's say because I'm a dog person myself, I want to loop through uh, both of these people and console log the name of their dogs. So let's try doing that. I'm gonna use a for of loop for const person of people array. And I'm just gonna console log person dot dog dot name. Let's see what happens now. Getting a little red line here, ignore that. And I get an error. Uncut type error, cannot read property name of undefined. So let me show you guys what's going on here. So our app broke, our code broke, and what's going on, it first went to Alice and it got the person alice.dog. So if we do person.dog for Alice, what does that equal? That equals undefined. There is no dog property here. There is no dog key here. So this equals undefined. Now with this undefined value, we're trying to get the name property of undefined, but undefined is not an object. So that name, this breaks the code. This is no good. So that's why our code breaks. So how do we get around solving this in a, a before optional chaining? And again, this, is, this may seem like a contrived example, but this really happens very frequently. It happens a lot at my work with my React projects. 
This is very common. So what we did to get around this situation from breaking our entire app because of this one problem, what we did was this. It's called short circuiting. We say person.dog and person.dog.name. Let's try that and run the code. And nothing broke. You don't see any error messages here. We get undefined and then dyno. Let me tell you guys what's going on here. This is called short circuiting. If this is how this works. If the first part of the short circuiting is a true fee value, then we go on to the next part and we compute this value and whatever the value of this is, we console log that. However, if the first part is a false value, such as undefined or null or zero or anything like that, then we never even run this second value here. So uh, with Alice, we just do person.dog, oh, that's undefined. Oh, look at that, undefined is a false value. So we're not even gonna try this here. And that's why you see a console, uh, console log of undefined here. So for Alice, we console log undefined because she, to her, on dog is undefined. And then to person two, person.dog, is that a truthy value? Yes, that's an object, which is a truthy value. So we go on to the next one and we do person.dog.name. Now, looking at this, this, uh, can get very verbose. So maybe we even have a bigger nesting problem in our project. Maybe a name is another object that has the uh, first property and the last name property and such. So if we want to get the first names of every dog, what will we have to do? We have to do and person.dog.name.first, for example, to get the first name. So look how long this is getting right here. I can't even fit it in this screen. So this is where um, optional chaining comes to save the day. Let me erase this example here. Instead of having this and, 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 and all this stuff, the only thing we have to do, and something that is identical to this code is this. We write person.dog, if that exists, then give me the name. So the optional chaining operator is this two right here, question mark and a period. Let's run this and see what happens. Again, it doesn't break anything. We get undefined and dyno. So what optional chaining does is it checks the property to the left of the question mark. Is this a truthy value? If it is, uh, give me the, the next property of the dot name in this example. If this is a false value, don't even try getting this property, just uh, return undefined. So that's, it shortens up this code. A lot and especially if you went back to our other example where the name it was an object and we had, we had a first property an optional last property and such then we could chain it again and write first like so so this is completely valid in ECMAScript 2020 it is coming soon it is available already in TypeScript 3.7 so it's not just properties where we could optionally chain like this we could also optionally chain arrays and function calls. So let me show you guys what I mean. Uh, I'm gonna add another property to person one. I'm gonna call this um, speak. And it's gonna actually be a function, a method. Like so. Ooh, this is getting kind of nasty in the indentation, whatever. And for the speak method, I'm just gonna console log, hello, I'm Alice, like so. Uh, person two will not have this speak uh, method. And now let's say I wanted to loop through the people again and I wanted them to speak. So I'm just gonna do a uh, person dot speak like so. Now let's see what happens. I run the code and it breaks. It says, hello, I'm Alice for the first person. And then it breaks. Uncut type error, person dot speak is not a function. So how do we, uh, before ECMAScript 2020, before optional chaining, how did we get around solving this problem? And again, this problem happens in real life. It does happen. This is this right here may look like a contrived example, and it is, but I think it's a good example. It's a decent example to show you guys what happens, at, what really happens in a real big app. So the way that we used to get around this problem is we do the short circuit again. We say, if person that speak as a function, if that is a truthy value, then we're gonna call it like so.
let's try running this and notice nothing breaks. We just get hello I'm Alice and everything's done, right? So again, this may uh, become very verbose. So optional chaining is a way to make this a little shorter and a little bit more convenient for us. However, some people are not a fan of this notation, but it is what it is. And how we get around doing this using optional chaining is putting the optional chaining operator, again, question mark and dot same time, and then putting the function call with the parentheses. So again, this is not the prettiest thing here. Some people argue that maybe we should have just done it like this, but whatever, they decided upon this right here. Let's run that. And again, nothing breaks. So this is an example of optional chaining the a function call. Now, as a final example of optional chaining, we could also optionally chain the array, the elements of an array. So let's say person two this time only had, let's see, um, close. No, no, no. I'm going to say, uh, cash, like cash in the wallet or whatever. Terrible example, but whatever. And we will say she, uh, he has, she has one dollar, a five dollar, and a ten dollar, like so. Alice doesn't have any cash. She doesn't have a wallet, so she will not have this property here. So, let's say we want to loop through our person again, and we want to get the first cash, the first ca dollar bill in their wallet. So I'm gonna do person dot cash at index zero. Let's see what happens if you run this code here and we get type error, can I read property zero of undefined? So again, for Alice, uh, Alice.cash is undefined. So here we're essentially saying, what is the zero value of undefined, which doesn't make sense and it breaks our code. So to get around this, just like before, we had to short circuit person.cash and person.cash at zero. If we do this, we no longer break the code. By the way, let's console log this to see what the result of this is. We get undefined and then one for Jackie, right? So again, we could use uh, no, optional chaining for this. Again, not the prettiest thing, but I think most people will get used to it. We did a question mark and a period. Now, this is saying, if this left of this question mark, if this cash property is a truthy value, then compute the zero of index of it. Otherwise, just return undefined. Let's run this and we get undefined at one. So these were the three examples of using optional chaining. Uh, I think this can be, this is gonna be very frequently used. So we could do it for properties, for uh, array indices, and also for function calls. So the next feature of ECMAScript 2020 that I'm excited about is called the Knowledge Coalescing. And this will come this year. Uh, again, it's not ready yet. However, I'm using TypeScript because TypeScript 3.7 came, uh, came with it a couple months ago. So I'm just gonna test it here. Again, I'm not gonna use the TypeScript code. And by the way, just ignore the code that's on the right side here. So we have a person here uh, as a name, Jack, height, no, money, he has zero money, has a girlfriend, false. So a pretty sad person. Now I wanna do something. This here, check this out. We have console log person dot name or operator doesn't even have a name. So um, let's see what this is doing right here. What did, this is another short circuit operator right here. And if this is true, if the left side of the or uh, state operator is true, then we console log the result of that. However, if this is a falsy value, then we console log the output of this, just this string right here. So let's check this out. Does, uh, does person have a name? Yes, he does. So we should see Jack right now. Let's run the code and we get Jack. All right, so what if uh, that wasn't defined? For example, let's say that key didn't exist. I commented that out. Now what would happen if we run the code? Nothing breaks and we just write doesn't even have a name. Uh, he didn't give a name. So, you know, that's working as intended. However, let me just put this back and let's comment this one. Let's try the height. So, a uh, person the height or didn't tell us his height. Notice the height for Jack is null. So, a uh, null is a false value. So, if you put null here, it won't compute this one. And instead, it will console log 
the result of this. Let's run the code and we get didn't tell us it's high. And even if this high property didn't exist like so, we run the code, it still gives us the right value. So, so far it's working as intended, right? But now this is where it gets a little bit weird and gives us the incorrect value. Let's try for money. Console log that money, person that money, or who knows how much money he has. So we are saying here that Jack has zero money. However, if you run this, we, by the way, we know that he has zero money because uh, it says zero here. But if you run this, it says who knows how much money he has. So why did that happen? That happened because zero, the number zero is a falsy value. So it won't compute that and instead it will console log who knows how much money he has. But that's inaccurate because we wanted to show them that he has zero money. So how do we solve this issue right here? Um, we got to say if person that money is undefined or person that money is null, then uh, then show them who knows how much money he has. Otherwise, show them uh, the value of this. So we got to do a ternary operator here. So it gets pretty nasty. So this is where the knowledge coalescing operator comes to rescue us. And what that does is it just checks, is this one either null or undefined? If so, compute this. Otherwise, don't compute that. Let's run this and we get zero instead. So what knowledge, oper uh, knowledge coalescing operator does is if this is either undefined or true, I mean undefined or null, we do the right side of the knowledge operator, coalescing operator. Otherwise, if it's any other value, even other falsy values such as zero, and later we will see well, it also works for false, then it will just give us whatever that was. So in our case, zero. Let's run it again and we get zero. Let's check that out for person the car. Notice Jack doesn't have a car, right? It's not specified here. So if we run this, we get who knows what car he has. And that's true. We don't know what car he has because he didn't specify it here, right? Now let's go to has a girlfriend, which is a Boolean, right? If that's not specified, we, we will say who knows his who knows what his relationship. Uh, who knows his, who knows about his relationship status? Let's run this. And he says, who knows about his relationship status? But that's not true. We know that he doesn't have a girlfriend because he says false here, right? So this is, again, an incorrect usage of this uh, short circuit operator. Uh, instead, if we use the knowledge coalescing operator, like so, we write false. So this is useful when you want to distinguish between your falsy values, like such as zero, uh, false, null, and undefined. It will only give you the right side if the left side was either a null or undefined. If it was any other value, such as zero, false, or even any truthy value, then it will give you what that value was. So this can get very useful if you want to distinguish between null, undefined, and other falsy values. Hey, so that concludes this video that dealt with optional chaining and knowledge coalescing operator. Two things that are coming to ECMAScript in 2020, meaning it will come to JavaScript in 2020. So I highly recommend again that you guys try using these starting now if you have a project such as a React project that uses Babel. Or if you use TypeScript, you can start using this right away. And uh, check this website out. So I will put the links in the description below. And I highly recommend as JavaScript developers, I think it's important that we stay on top of these type of new topics. So try reading about some of these. So some of these are very technical and very um, a bit a bit hard to read, but I highly encourage all you guys to try reading them and try to find ways to implement them if need me. Again, you don't have to use some of these, uh, but some of these definitely may be useful. Again, thank you guys so much for joining me today. Uh, like my content, please subscribe below for more coding stuff in the future uh, and happy coding.